Um, so what I would want to talk about is joint uh, with Greg Perlstein. And well, what it, well, some of it is sort of maybe folklore, and then some of it really is a, a repackaging job of a letter that Deline wrote to Katani and Kaplan. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I hope you like it. So uh, oh yeah, I start with a, just a definition. So a, a split real uh, mixed Hodge structure. Um, is a is a real vector space V uh, equipped uh, with a decomposition so V C equals direct sum of V P Q so direct sum uh, P and Q and Z. Satisfying VQ, VPQ bar is equal to VQP. OK, so uh, you write HS. I want to write HS for the category of these. And then the morphisms are just the maps of vector spaces that preserve the VPQs. So they're defined in the obvious way. Um, so uh, given uh, V in this HS, you have uh, two filtrations. Uh, so one is uh, the, the weight filtration. And that's defined as a. Uh, WK of V equals direct sum of P plus Q less than or equal to K of uh, VPQ. That's defined over R. Because VPQ is equal to VQP bar. And then uh, the Hodge filtration. Which is given by FP of V equals a direct sum of P prime bigger than or equal to P of V P prime Q. So uh, also these the the weight so W F determines the V P Q by the formula uh, VPQ equals WP plus Q intersect FP <clears throat> intersect FQ bar. So you could define a, a, a split uh, real mixed Hodge structure in terms of this data. OK, so I'm going to make a remark. Um, so another thing is that v, v is pure of weight k if vpq is equal to 0 for p plus q not equal to k. And these guys, the reason they're called split is every, every, every such v, the way I've defined it, is is a direct sum of pure ones.
Okay. So, the, so here's the, the observation. There's a simple observation that kind of starts off the story, and that, that I want to kind of generalize. Uh, so it's just, I guess it's due to Delene. And that is that, uh, so you let S be the restriction of scalars from C to R. So the Vey restriction from C to R of the multiplicative group GM. Um, then uh, this HS, that's equivalent to the category of representations of S. And uh, so maybe I make some remarks. So one, this, this is pretty. This is pretty easy. Because um, well, S C, the way the restriction works, S C is just uh, well, it's G M cross G M. Uh, so the character group of So the character group of, of, of S, which is just the Homs from S to GM, that's equal to Z cross Z, but with the, the Galois group. So the Galois group of, of C over R switches the two factors. And then, um, well, if you write, uh, if we call the generators Z and Z bar, then uh, VPQ is equal to a set of, well, it's equal to the, well, I'll just write. It's equal to a set in, of V and V uh, such that um, SV is equal to Z to the P of S, Z bar to the Q of S, V, uh, for S and S. And then the condition that the V actually come from a real vector space is just that the VPQ bar is equal to VQ, VQP. Oh, so maybe I, yeah, let me, let, me put it, let me put it this way. So then uh, if V is in the representations of S, you can set VPQ equal to this. And the condition, so I should write this VC. The V uh, it has a real structure, is that uh, VPQ bar is equal to VQP. Okay, the, the other thing is that it's not surprising because this, this, uh, this category of hot structures is a Tanakhian category. Uh, so it's a tensor category. So it's not surprising. Because, the, because uh, HS is a Tanakhian category. It's a tensor category, tensor abelian category, uh, with a forgetful functor. To vect r, so by just abstract nonsense, it has it is the representations of some group.
But the, the cool thing is that the group is so small, I mean, so small and so simple. Um, so I want, can I, I don't know. Can I use this one? Okay, I use it. What? Yeah. So for the sim, yeah, if I didn't, it would be the wrong symmetry. It wouldn't be invariant under the conjugation. Uh, so and here's, here's, I just want to make another remark, so because I will use it a little bit later. That um, here's a way to understand S. So here's, I just want to say that S, well, it's equal to S1 cos GM mod plus minus 1, where this plus minus 1 is embedded diagonally. It's not hard to see, I mean, but S, S comes equipped with these maps. So these guys are built into the definition. I don't know, they're just something built into S. So uh, that, this gives a map from GM to S. This gives a map from S1 to S. And it's not so hard to see that S is actually this product mod plus minus 1. Um, so it tells you kind of what the representations of this guy are. You just have to you know, have the representation of this guy is defined by characters. The representations of this guy are defined also by characters. But they have to have some invariance. And then you kind of mod out. I tell it makes you No S yeah S one S one equals the non um, the non split torus of rank one over R. Which I think it's okay. It looks like S1. <laughs> the real points. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's an algebraic group, S1. Yeah, it's S1. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a, r a real algebraic group. It's, if you take it to C, base change it to C, it becomes GM, but it's not GM before you base it. That, that's what it, there's only one thing like that in that one. I'm calling it S1. I call it S1. Uh, yeah, what? Only yeah. One yeah, the non split. There's only one non split one. The, yeah. There's only one that's not equal to GM. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, um, oh, now I say, you know, pure, pure Hodge structures arise uh, from, uh, you know, HK of X, R, X smooth projected. Okay, so um, so then there's the here's the definition. Let's do the lean. Uh, a mixed Hodge structure is a real vector space with uh, two filtrations. Okay, so W equals weight filtration. Uh, and that's supposed to be a decreasing filtration of V, increasing filtration of V. And then uh, F, and that's a Hodge, and that's a decreasing filtration of VC. Just just like those, those guys, except um, And then the, there's uh, such that um, GER WK of V is, uh, uh, let me put it this way, such that F induces pure 
pure HS will weight K on GER W K. And the, 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 the thing is, um, remark, if X is any uh, uh, complex algebraic variety, then uh, Deline showed that uh, H n of x r has um, a mixed on structure. OK, so, um, so what, what's the difference between the mixed guys and the pure guys? So to, to say this, I, I to, to, well, the main difference, the main difference between the mixed guys and the split guys is that the mixed guys might not be split. But to, to, to say this, uh, to kind of, so they might not split as direct sums. And to say this, I, I want to say a theorem. What? Yeah, they're much scarier. But that, so I tell you, like, so there's a theorem. and. I kind of hope I get the app. I just, I'm. Oh, yeah, now they're not even louder. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, okay. Now, I just want to know what time I started so that. It does, it's not important now, but it's important at the end. <laughs> okay, so uh, so let uh, V be a mixed odd structure. The mixed odd structure. Uh, then, uh, so there exists a unique uh, decomposition. IPQ of V C such that so W N so I would I should really write W N tensor C but I'm just going to write W N uh, W N is equal to P plus Q less than or equal to N of IPQ so literally I should write W N tensor C F P is equal to the direct sum of P prime bigger than or equal to P of I P prime Q. And you see, if it was a split guy, then the IPQ and, and the IPQs were the VPQs, you'd have IPQ equals IQP bar. But you don't have that, because it's not split. So what you have instead is that IPQ, this is the part that's always confusing, IPQ is equal to IQP bar. 
modulo the direct sum so r less than p s less than q of i r s. And the, so, you know, the, the, the lean, actually, so the, the history of this, I think, you know, was, I wasn't around then. But the history uh, is that Deline wrote down what they were. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Catani and Kaplan, I guess, characterized them. So the, 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 there was a formula for them. So the IPQ is equal to FP intersect WP plus Q intersect this, this thing. So the cool thing is like you have FP intersect this, and then you would like to kind of go down, this guy go down by one, and this guy go down by one, but the first time, this guy goes down by two, and then it keeps going down by one. It, I mean, it's just a, yeah, it's just a formula. So, uh, well, okay, so this, I would say some notation. So basically, from this theorem, you get a characterization of, of uh, mixed Hodge structures, which is analogous to this one of the pure Hodge structures, but uh, it's more complicated because the group is more complicated. Uh, the, I mean, the group is is big. Uh, so, but I say some notation first because I want to explain the the characterization. So, uh, suppose uh, V uh, F W is a mixed Hodge structure. Um, so then, the endomorphism of V, that also inherits a mixed Hodge structure. And what I want to do is I'll set lambda. So they, they call it lambda minus 1 minus 1, uh, Katani and Kaplan, but I just want to call it lambda for now. So lambda, is a, you set it to be the direct sum p less than 0, q less than 0 of the i PQs of that NV. Okay, so now um, here's the theorem. There's a theorem of Katani, Kaplan, and Schmidt. So what, uh, so let, let V, F, W be a mixed Hodge structure. Then uh, there's a unique delta in lambda uh, R, which is the lambda intersect end of the real part of N, uh, such that V is minus I delta dot f. So this guy is an endomorphism of v. So you can, and, and so when you exponentiate it, it's an automorphism. So you can take that automorphism and act on a filtration. That guy w is a split. Is a split mixed touch touch. So here I'm just using the fact that the split guys, they sort of an obvious map into the mixed guys. OK, so uh, I, mean, I want to say one, I, mean, I want to give the proof. The proof is actually kind of cool, and like really, I like it. But, uh, but I just want to say like, the idea, the proof involves uh, looking at uh, splittings of, of V i.e. Uh, endomorphisms y in NV um, such that uh, wk 
is a direct sum of eigenspaces. So WK is a direct sum of eigenspaces of those endomorphism Y. So there's a there's a special splitting. So Y of FW defined by just Y of FW on V is equal to P plus Q on V for V and IPQ. And, um, and, and the V is split if and only if Y is equal to Y bar. Oh, looks like easy, here's an e easy fact. So VFW is split if and only if Y is in end of VR. So that's if and only if Y is equal to Y bar. And it's like a, might as well give the proof of this. This is kind of easy and, so, oh, and I think I can hack it. Um, so, uh, so this, this way, so if VFW is split, Then, um, well, then IPQ is equal to IQP bar. And this guy is equal to VPQ. And this guy is equal to VQP. And um, so, so Y is defined over R. And then if uh, the other way, Other way, um, uh, well, since so if you look at the definition y of IPQ, that's contained in IPQ. So y of FP is contained in FP, and y of WK is contained in WK. So y is a morphism of mixed Hodge structures. As long as y is defined over R. But then, um, but if that's so, then um, the kernel of y minus k is a sub hod structure. And this, this is just the kth eigenspace of y. So that, but then that shows that the, the, that gives the decomposition the, by taking the kernels. So okay, so okay, so now um, well, well, here's a corollary, and yeah. yeah. I think this corollary is due to Catani, Kaplan, and then Deline. So Catani, Kaplan, they're, they're, but you don't, yeah, I haven't written it down, so you don't know. So uh, the, the category of uh, mixed Hodge structures is equivalent to the category of pairs uh, V delta where uh, V is a split mixed hot structure, and delta is in lambda of V. So the way, the way this goes, so given, given VFW uh, in MHS, what you do is you send it to this guy V e to the minus i delta dot F. W and the pair delta. 
And it just so works out that this delta, he's not just in lambda of this guy, he's also in lambda of this guy, because those two lambdas are the same. And that's, I mean, it's fine. Check that. So, and the morphism of these pairs are just pairs, morphisms of V that commute with the deltas. So, it, this kind of tells you exactly how far mixed Hodge structures are from being split because it's controlled by this guy, delta. Uh, and then the, you can, so what you can do is repackage this information, and this is what Deline did. Um, so you can repackage this information to say what the Galois group is of the category of, of, of real mixed Hodge structures. So, um, okay, so, to, but to, so, so I need to say some in the data before I repackage it. I say what Delaney said. So you said uh, you said L, I'll say L C equal to C um, on the, the the free vector space on generators D P Q for every integer P and Q where P is less than zero and Q is less less than zero. So it's you know it's infinite dimensional. Uh, so you put a real structure on it, by uh, setting uh, uh, these dpq bar equal to dqp. <coughs> and then um, you set free l. So that, that gives you an l sub r. Okay, and you set free L to be the free Lie algebra. On LC. So really it's just, you know, if you take the free L and you tensor it with C, it's just the free Lie algebra on these countably many generators, which is a big thing, but you know, you know it's, you know, it's not that it's not that hard to understand. And you set U equal to the the associated, so every, if you have a, if you have a nilpotent group, then, at, nil, if a nilpotent Lie algebra, then you exponentiate it, you get a unipotent group. So this guy is sort of pro-nilpotent, you exponentiate it, you get a pro-unipotent group. So corresponding pro-unipotent. Group. So it's also big, you know, but it's. And now S acts on uh, L R uh, by putting, uh, by giving L the Hodge structure with um, LPQ equals to C of DPQ. So put these guys, these DPQ guys in the weight, the PQ graded piece. So here's the theorem, or theorem of Deline, that, um, well, you set, so I want to call it M naught. So you set M naught equal to the semi-direct product of U with S, then, uh, the category of mixed Hodge structures, that's equivalent to the representations of this M0. But <clears throat> this thing, really, if you think about it, it's not really, I think it's not really saying a whole lot more. I don't want to, well, it's, 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 it's not that hard to see that it's true from this, from, from this. Because what it's saying is that if I have, the, if I have this guy delta, then I can decompose it, the, you know, I can take the Hodge components, I get some guy delta PQ. And this, that, what I, what I want to do is just let DPQ act on whatever Hodge structure I have via the delta PQs. Or I have something I want Under the correspondence so 
So if V is in MHS, then under the correspondence, um, DPQ acts on VC uh, via delta PQ. And this whole business about the freely algebra is just, just essentially saying that you can, you can assign the delta PQs in an arbitrary way. So, OK. So now I want to talk about uh, de with degenerations of a uh, mixed Hodge structure. Or variation. So, so, so after I'll leave that. So, uh, oh no, it works. So after Schmidt, you have this picture. Oh no, I don't want to erase that. Uh, Let's keep this. That's okay. So after Schmidt, you have this picture of various. You you want to look at um, variations of Hodge structure in kind of varying uh, levels of complexity. Uh, so these come in various levels of complexity. Okay, so the, at the most complex level, you have the period maps, uh, which in the pure case, in, in the pure case, these are variations of Hodge structure. In the mixed case, uh, admissible variations. So these are like, like horribly complicated. What? No, these really, really are nasty. <laughs> okay, so when we have functors uh, going, so we have an inclusion in these into. Okay, so we have nilpotent orbits. Uh, respectively, what's called admissible nilpotent orbits. Okay, so these are defined by linear algebraic data, but they're but they're still really complicated. They're pure linear algebra, but still really complicated. Like really, really complicated. But the, uh, the, so they're the function. So they include, so I maybe lie a little bit here, but nilpotent orbits, I, I, I might, may or may not tell you what they are, but they correspond to variations of Hodge structure over the disk, over the puncture disk. Okay, and so they include by the nilpotent orbit goes to the corresponding variation of Hodge structure on the, over the puncture disk, but then there's kind of a way to go back. And if you, if you take your favorite nasty variation of Hodge structure, Schmidt proves that you can approximate it by a nilpotent orbit. So, and this one is like easier to think about, really, because it's, it's just linear algebraic data. <clears throat> okay, but then, uh, so I was hoping the blackboard would be big. But okay, this is really bad, what I'm about to do. But, um, oh, do I want to do this? Yeah, okay, then no, I'll, I'll keep it on the same blackboard. Then you have what's called SL2 orbits. Okay, so these are really easy. And Schmidt proved, well, first of all, it's easy to, pretty easy to see that every SL2 orbit, there, there's a fully faithful map from the SL2 orbits 
to the nilpotent orbits, but then Schmidt proved that you can approximate a nilpotent orbit in a particular way by an SL2 orbit. Now, the particular way is complicated because these guys are really complicated. But what you get in the end is something that's easy to understand. So I want to. So, in fact, yeah. so what, what I want to do is I want to first say the easy part, the, the, first, the, the first thing I said about the representations of S, but for SL2 orbits. So about pure Hodge structures for SL2 orbits. So these guys, maybe I, I think I should say, you should just think of these as a split Hodge structures. They're, they're kind of that simple. Okay. So I, I start with SL2 orbits. Okay, so, so the, there's some data. The way, the way they were defined, there's some data into what an SL2 orbit is. And I'm going to give you that data, and then I tell you that these guys are representations of a particular group. I tell you what the group is. Uh, so you start with V, uh, finite dimensional um, real vector space. Okay, and W and Z. Okay, you, you, then you give yourself a pairing from V tensor V to R, non-degenerate, of parity minus one to the W. So if, if W is even, then it's uh, symmetric. If W is odd, then it's skew symmetric. Uh, then you set D check Okay, equal to the set of filtrations V filtrations of VC such that um, just F, I hope I get the indices right, F W plus one minus P is equal to F P perp. So this pairing is supposed to eventually be a polarization on the Hodge structure. And this, this is like a Riemann bilinear, bi, kind of like Riemann bilinear relation. Anyway, that's the definition. And then D, <coughs> D is a set of F such that V, F, is a pure Hodge structure of weight W. So this is called the classifying space. OK, and then you have groups. So G is equal to a real algebraic group uh, of all the guys that preserve um, of, 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 the, of all the guys that preserve um, the, the pairing. And then um, the, the cool thing is G acts uh, transitively. And that's just, uh, be careful. So G of R acts transitively on D. and G of C on D check. And then D is open in D check. OK, so, uh, and it's, they're both analytic, they're, they're both manifold, complex manifolds. Uh, this is an example. Cool example is V equals R2, uh, W equals 1. Um, so just this guy is the standard. Okay. And then D is the upper, is the upper half plane. And D check is equal to P1C. And then G, G is equal to SL2 
And then, you know, the action of SL2 on this guy is the standard action of SL2R on the upper half plane. Um, this is an analytical remark. So if F is in D, then uh, VF has a Hodge structure. So uh, the Lie algebra, so G of G, which is contained in, uh, in, in inherits one as a subspace, a sub HS of this NV. So that, that's okay. Okay, so now here's the definition of what SL2 orbit is. So an SL2 orbit is a pair uh, rho from SL2 to G, phi from P1 to D check, such that, okay, one, uh, phi sends the upper half plane into D. That's thing one. Two, uh, everybody's sort of equivariant for G. So phi of G of Z is equal to rho of G P of Z for Z in the upper half plane. And then uh, three, um, the, the map from SL2 to G, so SL2, he gets a Hodge structure for any point Z in the upper half plane. And then G gets a Hodge structure for any point uh, phi of Z, for any phi of Z. And then do you want that this is a morphism of Hodge structure? Okay, so the, okay, the, real, the, the real place where my story starts actually is kind of here. So um, the, there's a category of these. It's kind of implicit in the whole, in the literature. So the morphisms so these form a category. So the morphisms are the, um, the morphisms of uh, the morphisms of the V's commuting with the SL2 action. So, So and, and Hodge, so the, the maps to the, that are induced by these guys should also be Hodge. And then you can take, you, know, you could take, so I always I put a, picked an integer w, but you could take a bunch of w's, a bunch of different integers and direct sum them and define a split SL2 orbit. And then the morphisms are just, you know, the direct sum to the morphism. So, um, so here's the, the first theorem, which is actually the, the thing I like most, but it's maybe folk. So it's, this is maybe folklore. I don't know. So the thing is, this is implicit kind of in Schmidt's original paper, but I, I think it's good to say it explicitly. So um, the category of split SL2 orbits 
is equivalent to what I want to call the, the representations of this group S1, where S1, that's SL2 cross S1 cross GM mod just plus minus 1, so embedded diagonal. So that, so that does the first part of what Deline, you know, Deline's first observation for these uh, degenerations, right? Because it gives you, uh, like a, you know, a, a small group that these guys are the representations of. And the reason it's implicit in Schmidt's paper is, so Schmidt, what Schmidt does is he notices that there's basically the category of representations of this guy, or the category of SL2 orbits, is generated by sort of three things under tensor product and direct sum. And he uses that like everywhere. So that kind of means you have to have a category. And then if, if you were to look at the Galois group of this, that category, it would be this. Um, OK, so uh, oh, and I maybe notice that there are two, let me remark. But how much, to, how, much, when, how much time do I have? A little more than 10 minutes. Okay, then, then I'm fine. Uh, <clears throat> so maybe remark. Uh, so yeah, so S, this group S1, that's equal to SL2 semi-direct product S in two essentially different ways. OK, so basically there are two essentially different maps from S into S1. So one is, so you can have S goes into S1 by, OK, you send, uh, so you have to remember that S, that's equal to S1 cross GM mod plus minus 1. So you can send a guy, let's call it little s alpha. Okay, so one thing you can do is you can send it to little s, little s, alpha, where this guy goes in, so it goes into SL2, so this guy's in SL2 cross S1 cross GM mod plus minus 1. So this guy goes in to SL2 as a non-split torus, so a non-split torus sitting inside SL2. You can do this. And then if you multiply by minus 1, then the whole thing gets multiplied by minus 1. So this way, if you look at this in terms of the, the, the categories, it, it associates to every SL2 orbit a representation of S. So in other words, it associates to every SL2 orbit a, a, a Hodge structure. So what it's really doing is it's just associating to this the SL2 orbit the, there's a, the phi of i. This just does that. Okay. So then the then there is another way. You have S goes into S one by S alpha goes to well, you can send it to S you can send it to alpha S alpha. So here the alpha goes in the alpha goes into SL2 by the split GM, you know the diagonal guys sitting inside SL2. And this associates to every um, to every um, SL2 orbit the limit mixed Hodge structure. So this guy associates to the guy on the interior, and that guy associates the limits. It's kind of, kind of cool because you can see the 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 because you have it gives kind of a concrete way. When you think about it this way, of, it gives a concrete way of seeing um, what the limit mixed odd structure is. Okay, so what I want to do 
the 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 main theorem is um, the generalization of this, but to the mixed case. So the, it's just completely analogous to uh, the, the Deline's characteriz characterization of real mixed Hodge structures. Um, <clears throat> so to 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 say it, I should say I have to say what a uh, what an admissible nilpotent orbit is. So that's. So the main theorem is a characterization of um, admissible nilpotent orbits uh, with um, each graded piece so each weight graded piece a uh, an SL2 orbit. OK, so then I tell you, so uh, a nilpotent orbit on uh, V is, um, uh, well, let me put it this way, is a, a quadruple. So V, F, W, and then you add on this guy N, where F and W are filtrations as before. And N is a nilpotent operator on V. OK, and then it has to satisfy just a whole bunch of stuff. But I tell you, so I tell you what some of the stuff is. Okay, so one n of f p is contained in f p minus one. That's Griffith's transversality. Uh, so I want to tell you, and then I want to forget some of them. So e to the z n dot f. So this guy, that's a, a, a matrix. I exponentiate. It's a nilpotent matrix. I'm exponentiated. I get a unipotent matrix. The unipotent guy, I can take it, and I can act on f. So I want that guy to be a mixed hot structure for Z. Uh, well, I would like to say for Z in the upper half plane, but one of the nasty things about this is that you can't say that. But as you go far enough in the upper half plane, then that's true. Um, then there is uh, some polarizability, which is just the existence of pairings. Uh, and then um, it's a So it's admissible if there exists a further filtration, and then which is necessarily unique, M equals M and W. So it only depends on N and W. Um, so if that's the case, Then uh, V, F, and M. Then you could make M into a weight filtration for F. So it is a mixed Hodge structure. And it's called the limit mixed Hodge structure. Do I need to, what M says? No, I don't want to say because of time constraints. 
you know, co co so there exists a further filtration M. So that filtration to be called this one, it has to satisfy some stuff. But that stuff is, is you, know, it's, uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> I mean, it's actually very easy, but this, I think, with the, given the uh, this amount of time we have, it's that it actually won't really help that much. But the, 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 the I mean, it's a very deep and cool thing that uh, I guess Deleen realized w w w in, when he was proving the vague conjectures that this guy is around. Um, and it's totally linear algebra. It just depends on n and w. But it's like a little bit of nonsense to, to say what it is. So I just don't want to say. Uh, <clears throat> OK. So this is called the limit mixed hot structure. And uh, what, I, what I wanted to say is, is um, also uh, the, the w's, so GER w of v, f, m, also uh, a mixed hot structure. OK, and my category, uh, I consider, uh, let's, let's set uh, split 1 equal to the category of all the admissible nilpotent orbits where this guy is split over R. Where for every every index k, this guy is split over R. So it is is I could say is in HS. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Oh, I could actually just say that this guy, that this V F M is in HS, because I define split mixed hot structure. Anyway, I would consider the ones where this guy is split. OK, and it's equivalent for this guy and this guy to be split. Just go. No, wait. OK, so now. Um, OK, so now uh, what, what I want to, so I want to characterize split. So I want to, uh, as, as the representations of some group, so now I tell you what the representations of the group are. So note that SL2 acts on that vector space L, which was uh, like LC equals direct sum of C P less than zero. And it, it, acts in a, it acts in a really kind of stupid and easy way, but uh, I just kind of draw the action. So, uh, so you have D minus 1 minus 1. So this, you make the trivial representation of SL2. And then you have d minus 2 minus 1 plus c d minus 1 minus 2. And that you make the standard representation. And then uh, so on and so forth. So it's, I don't know. Maybe I'll write the next one. d minus 3 minus 1 plus c d minus 1 minus 3. That's uh, where it's, uh, you know sim two of the standard. So it's like a triangle that just goes down from d minus one minus one. So it's like this, kind of like cool. Uh, so this gives once you um, this gives an action. Of S1, which is you know SL2 cross uh, S1 cross GM mod plus minus one on on that guy L. Okay, but then um, that that gives so then that gives. Uh, 
that gives an action of S1 on that U, which was the, you know, uh, the unipotent, the pro-unipotent group. So you can set, so what I was do is let's set M1 equal to um, U semi-direct product, so it's S1. And then here's the, the main theorem. So I should say this, I mean, the main theorem, this, I said at the beginning that this is kind of a repackaging of a letter from Deline to uh, Catani and Kaplan. So the, this main theorem, it is like a repackaging, mean, that this is what it is. Um, so split one. That's equivalent to the representations of this guy, M1. And OK, so uh, maybe I want to say, well, I don't have too much, I have too much time. Um, so the, like the cool, th I, one, the, 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 the thing that I like about it is that this, this guy split, you know, he's, he's, it's not every admissible nilpotent orbit. The graded pieces have to be very special. But there are, you know, it's, I think it's nice that you can understand the group. I think for, for all nilpotent, admissible nilpotent orbits, it'd probably be just impossible. Um, uh, maybe I stop. Yeah, so I, no, oh, no, split, split. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. So I mean, the, the nilpotent numbers I talk about are one variable, right? There's only one z. And the, um, the, if you could have r variables, where r is any non negative integer. And when r is equal to zero, you just get mixed Hodge structures. When r is equal to one, you get this thing. And then when R is, you know, in general, the SL2 group becomes like SL2 cross, um, no, S, I don't know what it is, SL2 cross SL2 cross SL2 R times, and then times S1 cross GM mod plus minus one. So you just get more factors of SL2. And so the, yeah, I mean, yeah, so in, in a sense, I do, I, but at least I have in mind that, the group for the SL2 orbits. For the, for the split, God, no, I, yeah, I mean, I, I have, for, the, for the split, I have in mind that there is an answer, but I don't have in mind what the answer actually is. And Deline's letter to Katani Ka and Kaplan, I mean, it, it will say some things about the technology of that, but there's linear algebra is like, a little bit complicated. For the R variable case, so I uh, yes, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at the beginning, you said that uh, mixed Hodge factors uh, are modeled after the cohomology of the writer, which is not necessarily smooth projective. Uh, and then you jumped into these uh, nilpotent orbits or whatever other orbits there were. Nilpotent orbits, SO2 orbits. Uh, uh, what's the geometric? Uh, oh, ver so nilpotent orbits are like variations of Hodge structure on a, a puncture disk, and the SL two orbits are like the kind of the, 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 the really special ones. <laughs> so that I don't really know a good way to say it besides that. So is it some kind of a nice family of varieties that? No, I think you will. Well, Katani might argue, but I think you will not find a, an actual algebraic family of varieties that will ever, I mean, this, uh, this might not actually be true, but I think it's pretty hard to ever find a family of varieties where the, the variation of Hodge structure that you get, an algebraic family, is actually a nilpotent orbit, mm -hmm. and definitely an SO2 orbit, that would be like really hard. But in like uh, kind of ideal situations, like the, the degeneration of, like the Tate curve, then I think you get pretty close. Like the Tate elliptic curve, so you, you know, you have a family elliptic, you know, Tate curve. 
family of elliptic curves degenerating to these you know, P1s crossing each other. That guy, like, really kind of is an uh, SL2 orbit. So if the variation of families gets you the, a variation of varieties gets you the very left of that? Uh, yeah, the very, the very complicated one, yeah. What do you call it? Uh, period maps. Period maps. So that's variation. Yeah, that's just really complicated. So the rest is just trying to simplify the hot structure without thinking about the variety. That's right, yeah. And I think you, I mean, I don't know, it's not a theorem. I don't believe that anybody's ever proved a theorem like this, although I could be wrong. But I think it's, it's just like impossible to ever get something from an algebraic family that will actually be even a nilpotent orbit. Am I right? Yeah, it's basically a column stuff. The nilpotent orbit should, should think of almost as what you see at one point, but it happens to be the dungeon space at where the family looks. And it's a linearization? Or it's, a, basically it's a linearization. Yeah, what, what it is is we, the, for a general period map, you, you have this over a, a polypuncture disk, or a puncture disk, right? Yeah. You have this, you can write it as a nilpotent orbit times some e to the gamma, where gamma is a holomorphic function. But that gamma, like you, it's never going to be uh, zero. <laughs> like never. <laughs> that never happens. So whenever you hear orbit, you should think variation. Well, there's another a, a hard thing about talking about this is that there's a uh, nilpotent orbit. It has a meaning inside representation theory, which mm -hmm. is not exactly the same meaning as this, but okay. they're I guess related. Yeah, related. Mm -hmm. So when you hear the word nilpotent orbit, like sometimes it actually doesn't mean this. But that just like you know, it's like you know, the word uh, red can mean like the color or like the past tense of the verb. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that serious. Thanks, speaker again.